it. Come well, on! Welcome to Free Range American Podcast. And I'm excited today because I think we've tried to schedule this multiple times. You're we a have, busy man. Yeah. We're busy. But we have the one and only Granger Smith on the show today. Hello, What's buddy. up, dude? It, it's exciting because it's 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 a guest that is consistently requested that we actually like, you know. <laughs> right, right. Uh, unlike Richard High. Right. Over at Angry Cops. Angry Cops. Who, yeah, everybody asks for him to be on the show, but we hate that motherfucker. Right. Well, <laughs> I've noticed that uh, it's it's hard for me to book this with Matt because he's so similar to me when it comes to scheduling. Yeah. It's, this is how it goes. Hey, dude, you want to be on the podcast? Dude, yeah. 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 Just let me know when you're free. I'm free um, pretty much any time. Like next week, let me know. Yeah, next week's good for me too. All and right. Yeah. And then, Six months yeah. later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot I had that conversation. I, I legit, because I really wanted you on the show. And then I looked back and I was like, oh, because I think you sent me to uh, whatever it is, Wednesday, Thursday, or whatever work. And I'm like, yeah, I never even gave you a date, a time, a location. I'm like, I'm a, sh this is why. And we did it. They're, we're so similar, though. I mean, I'm the same way. It's hard to just to nail it down and go, Tuesday, 3 p.m. See you there. But it's easier if it's like four days away for me. Like people are like, hey, what's going on? You know, what are you doing the third week of yeah, October? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. whoa, that's three weeks away. I don't know. Right. Yeah, number same, one. So same. I'm going to need you to just wait until it's like the day of. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> How's this afternoon? Yeah. yeah. I, I Actually, that works. Yeah. I, I drive my wife insane that way because it's just like, well, me what too. are you doing the, the 17th of December? And I'm like, you're going to have to ask me the 15th of December. And it's like, really? I'm like, I have no clue. Because every day, especially I imagine in, in the country music industry, like you never know when you're going to get invited on a show and there's things you have to prioritize you over. a haircut. I, sure. Yeah. And you then what happens on the 17th? Clean. Babe, I told you that, that we were doing this today. Right. Yeah. No, I can't today. I can't today. It's not the no. right day. No, I've got to get know. my boots cleaned. You got, I need you to wear sharpen. boots. I'm talking about being a country music star. Granger has you really got, nice boots you on. Got I saw sharpen that. Sharpen spurs, I imagine. Yeah. You have you have six shooters that you. Yeah, whoa! Yeah, yeah. You've got ye yeah. ye boots. Yeah. Do He's you got, sell these? Comes out tomorrow. You do. Yeah. And and can I have? I'm I want to buy, buy some. I'm going to yeah. buy a pair because I don't own a pair of cowboy boots, and I yeah. think I need them. We'll By the way, I do have a I have a bone to pick with your friend. What? And let me ask this first. Who's his friend? What? This is the main reason I invite you on. What's Earl Dubs Jr. like in real life? Um, hates city boys. Okay. He's uh he's been self quarantining for the last fifteen years or so. Oh oh self quarantine mm -hmm. before quarantine. Yeah, yeah like but we, a, but a before. Social he did it on purpose because he just didn't like city boys. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But so Earl Dubs has ruined the state saying don't tread on me for me because every time I read something that says don't tread on me, I say, don't tread on me. <laughs> Honestly, he's somebody I think that would be really good friends with me. Like him and I would probably drink gasoline together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he always throws in those big old dips, the Earl Dubs. Yeah, yeah. So, so if the audience doesn't know, um, on your YouTube channel, Granger Smith, you're like a legitimate country music star. You're you make great music. You're just a great dude. But then you have oh, this stop it, man. this friend called Earl Dubs Jr. who is more of like I hate shitty boys, and he he makes some very hilarious satirical those, country songs as well. Those close to me say Earl Dubs, but most people don't say Earl Dibbles. Earl, Earl Dibbles, mm -hmm. really? Earl, Earl, Dib Earl Dibbles Never Jr. Got that. Oh, they don't know how to say those his name. Those close to me say uh, Earl Dubs. Earl Dubs. Yeah, I've got a question for you. Yes, sir. About another country music star that's amazing. You know, he does nothing but write chart-topping hits. Uh, -huh. uh Mr. Unknown Henson, are you familiar? Uh, man, there was a time, <laughs> when was that, like 10 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> and I was just all over Unknown Henson, Hey, man. he was great! <laughs> yeah, uh, eat a cheeseburger, baby. Yeah, yeah. I Who sent that. that pitiful girl in here? Oh, I need meat God. after a show. I'm hungry. Oh, man. Do you know what we're talking about? No. You don't I, know Unknown Henson? I don't know how I don't so know this. He is the voice. It's, yes, it's yes. so far removed. Like, this is where you start getting confused in an identity. He is the voice of early Kyler on Squidbillies, but Unknown Henson is a fake country music star who yeah. is the, like, the, the voice is credited to a yeah. fake oh, character that yeah. exists that tours as a fake country music star. And Does he, he still tour? I, as as early as last year, I saw he did a couple a couple shows in Georgia or something like that. He was going around 10 years ago, whenever that was, when it was popular, and selling out clubs everywhere underground oh, and it's just all common most batshit crazy songs Matt. it's just like, all common. i can't believe you're pregnant again i ain't afraid of your husband i'm coming over tonight <laughs> like, oh wow yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that's, like, that's like wheeler walker s stuff but it was cooler. it was, it was yeah, way before him man than wheeler walker like yeah like, yeah it was like the it was like if johnny cash was a comedic character that was real 
Oh. Yeah, and he looks he's like, like super cool. And he looks like a uh, vampire. Well, a vampire <laughs> merged with uh, the All king. Right. Fucking. Yeah. What's his name? Who am I thinking of? Elvis. Yeah, Elvis. Oh, I thought you said a king, the no, king. The king. Who's the king Elvis. of pop? I, I don't know. Elvis. It's Elvis. Yeah. Don't get yeah. that. No, he looks, Michael he Jackson. dresses like Elvis, but kind of a vampire, but he's a country music star, but it's fake. Okay. And he's also the voice it, of early This time. is the first time I've ever talked about Unknown Henson <laughs> on, on anything. And, it's funny though because he was he was a little bit in a little way he was one of the slivers of the predecessors of Earl Dibbles Jr. Really, because here's this guy that was a comedic uh, country music character, character. Yeah. and and in a lot of ways when we were watching Unknown Henson and Squidbillies all the time and like in, back in the van days we'd put in like DVDs of Squidbillies yeah. oh, and yeah. just watch the seasons and that there's like little jokes in Squidbillies. I don't think that show gets enough credit. No, it was a really well written show. And 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 yeah, like he was he was kind of he was ahead of the time because yes. like he was interviewing. He's one of the first people I saw interviewing his characters on real music channels. By the way, yes, uh, like yes. and it's funny fucking interviews, and he's just crazy. And like, do you ever watch the 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 fake documentary that Squidbillies did, no. where it shows where he's showing up to the Squidbillies office to do the voices, no. and, and the staff is like, yeah. Unknown shows up and like we just kind of we we print things out real big and we get him to say a few things and then we've developed this computer to just do his voice for us because he's completely independable. <laughs> like it's, that is so cool, man. Yeah. Okay. So uh, for everyone listening, homework is check out Unknown Henson on YouTube. It's still on there. It's ingrained in me because those are my Xbox and PlayStation names, Unknown Henson. Nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you and then there's another country because I gotta I gotta make sure I get this right. There's another country music star on your channel as well, right? Outside of Earl Dibbles or Dipples, we'll call him Dipples because he dips yeah. so much. Yep, yep. What's what's the other gentleman where he goes? Uh, here, here I am. That song. Don, right? Donnie Cowboy. Is Donnie that Cowboy. Yeah. I, what's the name of that song? Uh, Parked out by the lake. Parked out by the lake. Have you heard that one? I, I, I love I, it because I think it, I heard the rough of that one. Remember, it, like, well, don't tell Granger that I heard that. We don't want to make him mad. Yeah. <laughs> but we were at it, your his, house. His you friends didn't, like, me up. send it around. Yeah. No, I love that song because it's like making fun of country music. And obviously, I'm yeah. a huge country music fan. Um, but it, it's all about like, in case you know where I am, park by the lake. And it just, and keep it just keeps like, repeating yeah. itself as like the dirt if, road. If, lake if stuff. you want to know where I, am. <laughs> it's, when when Earl first came out uh, with the Country Boy song, which is that was his first song, uh, first music video. And the music industry was coming out like like Rolling Stone. All these articles were coming out like this is genius. This is making fun of the state of country music and the industry and the the stagnant times that we're in with with lyrics. And I was like, no, nah, that's not at all. We're we're just having fun. We we're literally fun. were just yeah. having fun. <laughs> we weren't trying to make a statement or or tell everybody that country music, modern country, sucks. It was nothing. We were just having a lot of fun. Well, I think a lot of that, that's how that content flows. I mean, that's similar to us. We were just having fun in the military space and people were like, this is a great cultural representation of the intricacies as right. far as the growth right. and stagnant portions of the, and you're like- And then it hard cuts I literally just had a just wasted, <laughs> yeah, like, just, oh, let's do a song about this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I guarantee you, you have that. With your songs, people go, oh, I know what you're saying. I man. know what you're saying. I know what you're, and yeah, I love it. I love what the statement that you're making. Well, I was, I was a little scared of Earl Dubs because <laughs> I didn't want to start my fake country career until I at least met you and you had talked to him and said it was okay. So, you know, now I have a couple- Satirical uh, country songs. My that I enjoy question doing. though is: Are you going to pin the two against each other? Are they enemies? Well, um, we had uh, Tyler, my brother, and I. We worked with a guy for a while uh, at our record label that was convinced, and he was a pretty smart guy. He was convinced the next step would be Granger's going to kill Earl. Oh, and absorb his power. Earl's going to die, and then and and it was going to be like this is the death of Earl. He's officially gone. We're going to bury him. We're going to have a funeral. We're going to mourn about him. And then he was going to come back. Yeah, oh, wow. he was going to come back and make a make a just a big comeback. I remember like, that. I feel like if there was a comeback At a for NASCAR him, NASCAR race. No, yeah, no, it's got to be that. Yeah. It's got to be. It'd be some city slickers like standing around in tight jeans, just like, yeah, country is stupid. And you just see the Earl Dub's fist come through the grave. <laughs> no, no, like, it what is, you say, old boy? Yee, yee. It and is you're like, the oh, freaking right. opening show of the Daytona 500 <laughs> after he's been dead for two yeah. years. It's like the Undertaker. All of a sudden, yeah, smoke comes yeah, out. Smoke. Yeah, yeah. It's heavenly. There's yeah. there's white and wings are coming out. Dun, it's like, yeah. dun, oh dun, my dun, god, dun, 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 unknown. Dun, Hinson singing back up. Yeah, you guys are you guys are on the same wavelength, man. Yeah. yeah. 
That's it. You've done some really cool projects. I think the first time I got to meet you in person was pretty cool. You um, shot a music video called Holler, which you haven't checked it out. I actually looked at the numbers the other day. It's over 7 million views on YouTube. And, and what a cool, great production you put in. And, and something that I really, really enjoy about your content, not to sit here and just rip my arm off and pat you on the back, but you... We legit had fun that day. You had yeah. Matt Demolition Ranch character out there, like Lunker, all, all these like kind of more outdoorsy, con conservative, if you say, influencers and, and content creators. And it, there was no, the thing that I really liked when you allocated kind of a, uh, let's just say a DP or a, or a videographer for each of us, we're like, what are we doing? And you have fun. Yeah. And that, I thought that was so cool because there was no like you had the uh, that gentleman that does the outdoor cooking show on there who's yeah. freaking yeah. awesome. Yeah, Kent Rollins, Cowboy Kent Rollins. Yeah, and and literally we just hung out, drank some beer, uh, you know, drove the trucks around, and and I by the way I got I'm going sidebar here. I I got such good points that day with my wife. There's that monster truck doing donuts, and it shot all the dirt right at us, and I just slammed the door on her to leave her inside and got pelted with rocks and she was like that was so hot i'm like i'm not gonna let you get hit by all the rocks but we legit just had fun That's that day awesome. shot shot stuff matt blew up something with his 50 cal and then that cut together was it was just a fun day man it was man it was so fun and that that, that you're exactly right the best thing that we could have done that day is instead of scripting out a normal treatment for a music video yeah just we cool. literally just said we'll get seven or eight videographers we'll pick our our favorite influencers we'll just have them follow them follow them around which I don't know if you know that one, Jared. I showed up and and we're ha hanging out the whole day, and they're like, "All right, Matt, you're gonna play the guitar solo." And I was like, "Yeah, C come again." I haven't the even fish guitar. I haven't even heard the uh, the uh, the solo yet. So I remember you yeah. handed me your phone, and I was like, "Listen to that yeah. nah, 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 part," and I was like, "I guess like a bullshit sounds like it's in D minor or something." Yeah. you know. But and I think I told you, but for a long time we had um, before COVID, we had big video walls behind our show, and so every night when we'd play that song during that moment. You're on the video That's wall. so cool. Playing, <laughs> playing that solo. Yeah, so cool. man, I want to be on a video wall. So you've played the Staples we were Center. Doing, you've yeah. played a lot of really cool oh, yeah, I'm just starting to tell people that now. It's like, Staples. Have you ever played shows? Yeah, Staples Center. No, no big deal. I was yeah. on the, the big screen. I was on the big screen. Well, I'll play. I don't, we were doing something. We were doing something that, because you left to go do that. Remember, I was going to go with you and then... You're like, oh, I'll knock this out. We got to, it's in some field, like big mm -hmm. field or something. I don't remember what we were doing though. I don't know. Something weird. We were at the ranch probably. They, they put together an epic bonfire up there. Is that yeah. your place, your business place something yeah. up there? Yeah, that's at our office. And that, that was actually, we got some Aggies that build the, the off-campus student bonfire. Those mm. were the guys that came and recreated it that's right so there at the, the Aggie bonfire, yeah. Yeah, because you guys, like, you have a really cool kind of, I don't want to even say business model, but what you've done with the diversity of content on your YouTube channel, and then you guys had, like, beverages you've had in apparel company, which, yee, yee, I love, I love your guys' stuff. You do so much cool, like, shit. It, it's fun to see that you're not just having, like, what I see a lot in the music industry of with labels specifically, just being a country music star and then someone runs, runs your merch. It seems like you guys play not only from a merchandising aspect, but a, a very active role in the branding, which is cool because I actually like this stuff rather than just like Granger Smith. You know, right, it's got right. yee yee, they're shotguns and it's, right. it's super, do you, do you have a part in that? Oh, huge. Yeah, yeah. And so my brother, Tyler, is my manager. He's like sitting right here. And then and then our, our younger brother, Parker, Yeah, uh, he's kind of, we call him our CEO. And so he runs the apparel exclusively and a lot of the brand. So we all three get together and argue about it and put our heads together and try to come up with different things. And, and we really do... I mean, BRC is a great, a great um, influence on us in trying to be a media company first and then apparel and music and everything second. Right. Because uh, that, that, that it, first of all, we just, I mean, first and foremost, we have so much fun making content and trying to deliver a value to our customers of the lifestyle that they want to be living. If they wear a shirt or a hat, we want them to know that this aligns with my life, not just what I wear. I, yeah. You nail on the head with that. I think a lot of of the cultural shift in, in that business model is changing because it's no longer the marketing agencies and these guys in ivory towers saying, "This is what this space wants." Yeah. You you yeah. live it. You're a country boy. You're a, you're a singer and songwriter, and you're an outdoorsman. We've essentially blocked those people out of authentic areas now. When it's it a comes to thing. Sub yeah, it right? is. Yeah, because they 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 are so clueless, and yeah. they are not able to satellite enter these subcultures anymore by 
you know, their cunning branding it's, or, yeah. or marketing. It's like, totally. oh, no, you don't get it, dog. <laughs> totally. I totally. I love that. I, I love it. If I saw this correctly, I believe you posted something very recently on Instagram of you playing at a very youthful age country. So yeah. this is not this is not like something you just jumped into recently. This is, yeah. has this been your whole life? It's goal? been my whole life. And, and we talk about this a lot, but when I talk about goals, I always say we need to be setting the highest intentions instead of setting specific goals. Like if, if my goal had been, all right, my goal is to get a record deal. And that's, that's the, the first and foremost, that is the goal is to get a record deal. It would have been a different path. I wouldn't have gone to Texas. I wouldn't have uh, built, tried to build a, an apparel company and tried to build a brand called Yee Yee, which has nothing to do with me and my name. Right. Uh, and, and so, so yeah, setting the highest intentions of, man, we want to build a lifestyle. We want to build a brand. We want to build something that everyone could buy into, whether or not if you even like the latest song, instead right. of hinging everything on that song or that record deal or that, that radio promotion. I mean, that's a good point. It's like, you know, not trying to get number one every time, but writing something that's true to you. And I think from the creative process that allows you to be more consistent because you're doing what you love rather than going, all right, what's trending right now? Exactly. Let me write a song about... You see Vanilla Ice's new country song? I did not. Vanilla Ice It doesn't surprise me, song? but what, what is it? <laughs> nothing, nothing. We, we shouldn't even bring that up. No. <laughs> it doesn't surprise Good me Good luck to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop. <laughs> He's like, wait a minute or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it just like a slow ice ice baby? Uh, the, it's, it's, it's like if the music video that you were in, mm -hmm. um, if Vanilla Ice made that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like Vanilla Ice that you remember. Is it, is it all singing or is there rapping? It's a combination of Is both. it like Everlast, we'll, I bet? We'll watch it after this. Okay. You guys definitely... Okay. I sent it to you. I was like... Remember, oh, I was that like, one. bro, you yeah. didn't see this because, because it was right after we were talking. It was right after you were kind of, this fake country career could actually be something. And I was like, look who else is trying to, to jump into this because it's very unauthentic. Like it was like, it was like somebody took a notepad and watched yeah. And, yeah. and looked at the country scene from All right, the dirt outer roads, scope. First one. Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Truck with mud tires. All right, let's put that on there. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, winch. Yeah, people need winches. Four wheelers. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This might domestic charges. <laughs> this, <laughs> right. <laughs> this might be a little too much to talk about. We have to talk about specifics here. But it, do you feel that there is an influx of outsiders coming into the country music space that aren't living this, but just want to participate in, per se, the clout of being a country music artist, and they sing about you know. Their dirt road and their their jacked up truck, but they own a Prius kind of thing. Did you do you see that For happening? Sure. In Absolutely, and it's it's really because, in my opinion, it's because country music has such good longevity for artists. Like you could sing when you're it's the new Christian sixty five, maybe so. It's a, probably a great example. <laughs> I mean, think about it's that a great in example. Two thousand to two thousand ten, that was that was an easy ramp for you to yeah. go. Yeah, because so like Kid Rock's another example. You know, Kid Rock has this massive, massive career in the 90s. Yeah. And then someone goes to him and goes, you know, your demographic is kind of like redneck Michigan. So we should pander to that and we should get you to just sing country. Don't rap at all. Just sing country. And, and I think people uh, key into that. I mean, George Strait's still putting out bangers. So I, that's some longevity right there. That it's album the he put out like yeah. two years ago was Bill, great. Bill Collins didn't get real big until he was like 37. I think we have a chance. I got a little tips the other night. I was playing on my new drum set. <laughs> nice. I love that. You know. Nice. So do you, what, what's your favorite instrument to play? Uh, I mean, I, it's hard to not say guitar. Uh, but I, I enjoy, I enjoy keyboard for a long time. I played steel guitar oh, wow. a long really? time ago wow. and I uh, never did anything with it. I've never played on my own stage steel guitar. I used to play on other, with other people. Um, and I loved the fact that I did play steel guitar for other bands because I kind of got the perspective of being the band guy. So it gives me good perspective when I'm talking to my band guys. Um, but, but yeah, I loved that. And that was kind of just a creative release to play steel. I don't see you a lot on set 
playing an instrument. You you tend yeah. to like rock around with just the mic a lot, right? It was weird. I remember the first time I didn't play guitar because there's kind of a stigma like you got you sing you country music, you need, a, sing, yeah. you need a strum and sing. And I remember the first time there was a problem, a technical problem with my guitar. And my drummer, we all have this, these mics. We talk to each other, you know, talk back mics behind, behind the scenes. And my drummer's like, just put it down and sing. <laughs> and I did. And that first time I was like, eh, what do I do with my hands? You know, what, what do you uh, do? What do you do? Yeah. And, but it, but it slowly got to the point. There was a time uh, when we were like heavily touring when I would look at the set and I'd go, okay, I'm playing guitar two songs out of 20. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And that's kind of what it became. Which is fair though, because I think that's probably been the industry standard for a while. And I've seen, you know, people play at the Opry and stuff and they're great, great musicians, but they're, they're strumming their, excuse me, their acoustic guitar and they're up on their chest well, and they're, and they're missing the chord like changes and stuff. And like, you see them going from like a C to an A and they're like, oh, but they're, you, I know that they're completely tuned or turned off for the most yeah, part. They're yeah. just essentially as a prop, which, yeah. you know, I get it adds to the allure, but I mean, if you can have more fun swinging a mic stand around, why not? Yeah, and it got to the point where when we started playing these clubs where there was a lot of people, it was easier to go out into the catwalk and slap hands and fist bump and really react while I'm holding the mic. And I lost that when I'm back, you know, trying to strum and put on a show. Hold a pick and everything. Yeah. Well, which makes sense. I think that's probably why people, I, I literally only go to country music concerts at, at my age. The other ones are a little too rowdy. But that's part of the fun is when the singers slapping hands, like right. kind of non-verbally communicating with the audience close up. That's what makes it fun. You're like, oh my God, yep. I've seen you on YouTube and you're right in front of my face rather than just kind of sitting back on a stage like, here's the next song. You remember those days when we used to like slap hands and yeah, people yeah, came. I mean, remember those days when people said network television and not YouTube. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Speaking of that, I mean, I have a lot of friends in the music industry. W what has been the impact of COVID? Because... I don't think a lot of people realize venues, you have the the touring musicians, you have the whole support staff that goes into putting on a massive production. Like it has it been as hard as I believe it has been for a lot of oh, people? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's been so, it's been entertainment as a whole. Just completely devastated. And probably what a lot of people, what I found a lot of people don't know is that uh, musicians make today, they make all their money uh, touring. Because of album sales are so low, it, it's it's turned in, and it used to be all the way up until twenty oh eight, maybe twenty ten, maybe uh, people made money from album sales, right? And then it turned into albums and songs became advertisements for the show to sell tickets. So for, you know, during during the heyday, it feels like so long ago when we did this when we toured. Spotify and Apple Music back now in just the pre-COVID days. Yes. Plan the advertisement to get you That's to the, the show. That's the advertisement because we're in the ticket business. Not the album business, but the ticket business. All of us. And, and so you got to think of it in terms of how many people, how many people will this song attract to my show? That, that totally makes sense because, you know, I'm not a musician by any stretch of the imagination, but we've put out songs that get, you know, three, four, five million views in YouTube. They have over a million streams. And the revenue that comes off of that is fairly minuscule comparatively if you had a team behind you doing it. And I mean, I don't, I don't think a lot of people realize the logistics behind putting on a tour. I mean, from driving the, the bus to setting up the gear to sound checks to yeah. merch sales to a manager talking with the venue. It is, a, it's a like, what does your team size look like on a, on a normal tour? Uh, on a normal tour, we're about 14 people yeah, total. Yeah. And, and so... And I've been keeping up with my booking agent during COVID and asking him about other bands, like how's every other band doing? You know, it's like testing the waters. And it's gotten to the point now, here we are now, where the latest my booking agent said was everybody, every single band is now either furloughed or um, completely fired. And definitely every crew guy, every sound guy, uh, every tour manager. And, and, and what's going to happen is sports are going to take precedent first because yep. they have they it's their arenas yeah that are gonna and then you're gonna have the top 65 arena acts all fighting for those days that they can get yep. this is gonna be a five-year fuck up yeah absolutely absolutely and it's crazy because when this happened in march we all thought may 
We'll be back. Maybe definitely June. Yeah, they were Maybe still May. selling yeah. tickets to that Motley Crue reunion tour. They had a million yeah. tickets they had to refund. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Uh, Tyler and I driving here through Austin, Texas. We passed by uh, the the arena there at University of Texas, um, Frank Irwin Center, and we saw Chris Stapleton rescheduled for November 2021. 2021. 2021. Holy smokes. Yeah. Even look at Top Gun 2. It was supposed to come out this July. It's yeah. now July. That might be the biggest disappointment of this whole year. And even then, I think they might postpone it again I'm because trying. I don't think theaters are going to be back by next July. And they're they're sitting on that to be like one of their biggest things. I'm ever. trying to see Tom Cruise shirtless oiled up again. Come on. You know? It's, right? It's going to be great. <laughs> right? It's going to be great. But that, well, the, but you've been now playing a few shows based mm-hmm. off of probably is it is it the states and as far as what they're doing and then I mean I think I saw one on Instagram where you turned the phone around and it was all headlights so everybody was in yeah. their vehicles has that been in, in like what's that experience like like a Biden rally <laughs> <laughs> maybe so I've never been in one of those uh, we did that in the Northeast we did a run of all drive in. Drive-in movie theaters where they set up a stage right next to the screen. That, and that was like Pennsylvania and um, Ohio and New Hampshire. And uh, I mean, it's hard to answer how has that been? Because if you would have asked me two years ago, I said, this is terrible. This is the worst show ever. I hate it. But just to get to play one, you're in like, perspective Fuck it. now, <laughs> I'm like, wow, it's real eyeballs are watching me. And it's not live stream. I hate live stream shows. I hate it. And that was cool for like seven days in March or April. Oh, so you've been doing some live stream shows? We started with that. It was like, well, this is all we could do. Let's do some live stream shows, bring the guys to what we call the Yee Yee Farm, and we'll do, we'll do like Venmo tips, you know? Yeah. That was really cool for like seven days. <laughs> and then it was like, man, we got we to gotta play some shows. And so then the drive-through shows and the or drive-in shows and whatever else we got to do, depending on the state... Like Missouri, South Dakota, states like that, no restrictions, nothing. Okay. Just a regular concert. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Texas has been kind of right in the middle. Like we Florida's that way now, too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I thought it was interesting when I came down and said hi to you when you guys sent up here in San Antonio and you see like the four to six chairs and they're all, you know, in, in a group there, but then they're socially distanced from the other one. I'm like, it'd be weird as a musician normally having everybody in front of you in high energy and yeah. then everybody's sitting down and they can't get up and they're just kind of like and, bobbing their heads the to the thing music. And though is, is what we don't realize is this is going to take probably 10 years to repair. Like, because people aren't just going to rush back to, it's such a stigma that yeah, no I one's know. going back to shoulder to shoulder anytime soon. It's like, we've been trained. So it's like, this is going to take a long time to and like repair. Luckily, country music, people are typically more conservative more willing to go out. And I look at it as like, man, we, we could be, and this is a stretch maybe, but we could be essentially saving lives by putting on a show and by br- getting people to go, you know, I got to go out and drink a beer. I have to hear a, a real drummer playing drums, a real guitar player, feel it and drink a beer. I have to, or I'm going to go absolutely crazy. Yeah, I think I think innately humans are social beings. And I mean, you even see that we had a, a board meeting and, you know, we went through all the proper stuff to get folks out here. But a lot of the executives that came in were like, this is the first meeting I've had since March. And we're in November. And you're like, yeah. that's the first time they've actually had at a physical location a meeting. And then right now with a lot of COVID getting worse in some states and then, you know, based off election, whatever, but it might be going trending the other way as far as lockdowns. But yeah, I think it's super unfortunate because that, that entertainment industry took such a massive hit and there's a lot of good people that are unemployed. And I'm wondering if there's going to be some form of technology or something that comes out that like hopefully gets these guys and gals some form of income. I know a lot of those uh, singer-songwriters have been going on like Twitch and performing mm-hmm. there and the live streaming, but you can only get so much out I mean, of think that. About, think about how much this, this like go the opposite direction where... 
think of the guys out there that were in kind of the smaller tier band that just got yep. picked up by like a Breaking Benjamin or you guys like, oh my God, I just got noted, you know, right. January, they were notified. I'm opening for Granger Smith for the rest of the yeah. year. And then yeah. boom, February, March comes and it's like, dude, those guys can't survive. They no. have not, they have not no. crested like the way that they earn their money yet. So it's like, how many acts were just dismantled over this? I think about that. I think about those guys. I, and I, and I, we wonder, we talk about, and we're lucky we have Yee Yee. You know, we're so lucky to have that. Where I'll, literally some of my band guys are working for us shipping t-shirts. But, but thank God we have that because there's guys, we wonder how many bands are just going to fold. Like how many bands are going to say, well, I'm just going to go work for my dad and hang drywall. I might as well. Uh, because that's secure. Well, yeah. And they're on the cusp of, you know, fulfilling their lifelong dreams of playing. I mean, that's, that's rough. It's super rough. I mean, no other way to say and it. You can put that across the board with entertainment. Though. How, many yep. how many, how many guys got a green lit script mm -hmm. finally from a studio or for a show or from Netflix or anything. And then boom, March, uh-uh, everything's pulled. Oh, by the way, we have to furlough a bunch of people. Like, it's like, yeah. how many things that were about to take off someone's career that just disappeared? Like, yep. like the fucking snap in Avengers. But but yeah. the silver lining in this is it gives you a little free time maybe to make a country boy band with us and yes. launch one some ridiculous content oh. because that would be fun. One horseshoe. We still need to film the video for uh, White Claw. White Claw. Yeah, because I really want to make Tim Montana jealous that I'm working with you, you mm -hmm. know, just mm -hmm. to really just drive that little, you know. Bring it on. Little knife in his side. I'm in. We'll just work out a schedule. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Next week. Let's go. Uh, Wednesday. Uh, yeah. Sometime, <laughs> sometime next Sunday, week. Actually. Sometime yeah, next week. Yeah. We'll, we'll write that song sometime next week. What, what's your favorite part? It seems like, is it touring and all of this? I mean, you get you got the brand and all that, but as far as a musician, is it the touring aspect? Of yeah, it it's those 90 minutes on stage, really. Uh, it, it gets, that's a long set. It gets, you know, the touring part. I've, I have loved it. And I, I have fallen in love with the like, camaraderie of traveling and, and eating the local food. But at the end of the day, even that stuff starts, starts to get old. It all starts to look the same. And you get to the point where it's like just those 90 minutes on stage makes it worth the trip. Does it ever get old? Because I, I have like massive ADHD. That's why I like playing leads on the guitars because I yeah. don't like strumming the same chords. Is it is it ever where you're singing and you just kind of are in that mundane, this is the song or is that what makes the crowd so interesting because you're that's the performance, the one time that they get to see. So you're like kind of doing your best you can right then and there. But I'd imagine if you're like ACDC and you're singing Back in Black when you're 60 years old, you're kind of like, man, I hate this song. Like it was great when I wrote it, but man... Yeah, it's for me, I know that changes with other people, but for me, it's all about how the crowd is responding to that song. It doesn't matter if I've played it a million times. For me, if they're going absolutely crazy, you're gonna, so if you're, you're AC, throw more yeah, energy into it. <laughs> yeah, if you're ACDC and it's back in black and, and they're going crazy, I'm like, this is great. We're living the dream. And it's funny you bring that up because just recently, like in 2019, I had a meeting with the, the guys, or maybe it was like the end of 2018. We had a meeting like, man, we, we have to take, we cannot take any show, any moment for granted because you never know as a musician, as an entertainer, when the last time, and I don't, I don't want to get deep, but Please. when's the last time we'll walk out on the stage with a great crowd, say goodnight and walk off. We don't know when that last time will be. And you almost have to treat every show like that. Dixie Chicks, prime example. Prime example. Yeah. It's so, you know that old saying that was going around the internet for a while that was like, at, at some point in your life, you went out to play with your best friend in your old neighborhood for the last time and you didn't know it. <laughs> you know, that, that it's a sad reality, I think, especially in the entertainment industry, right? I mean, we, we've thought about that and there's a reason that we were so focused on building a brand because we're like, we want to have a far, far longer life cycle outside yeah. of me going, hi, I'm Matt, you know, like, Luckily, we love entertainment. We've pivoted and done different creative things, but completely, you never know when you're not current anymore. And luckily, country music, you got, hopefully we'll have a very, very long, lustrous career. But yeah, you never know when people are like, I don't like this dude's content anymore. And the young up and cumbers yeah. are more interesting or something. And that, yeah. that show turns from 5,000 people to 1,000. And then you're like, man, I'm booking the burger joint for my friends and family again. This feels like I'm 18 years old, but 
mean, I guess that's part of the process of life, but so you got to enjoy it while you're there. You do. And, and, 2020 for everybody made that a reality. <laughs> yeah, very, very. We're back true. to the burger joints again. Yeah, yeah. let me bring so you on the other end of that spectrum. Yeah. When was the first time you saw the crowd singing one of your own nice. songs back to you? Because mm-hmm. I've yet to experience that kind of yet. I mean, we have our funny songs, but I think like like that's kind of my next huge goal. Yeah. Is I've never had a serious song and I've never been on a stage and had them sing it back to me. And I, I have this feeling that that's going to be a very, a very prime moment. <laughs> You're right, man. If that's a real feeling because you go from being what we call a fish in an aquarium where you're just like, you're the fish and there's a bunch of people outside the glass just entertain me, fish. Yeah. You know, as well, they're drinking opener, their beer. You right. know, people don't generally know right. your music yet. You're just there. And it's like, it's, you're in that stage where you're growing, you're getting yeah. the name out and things like that. So you go from that to the fish in the aquarium to, for me, I was going to Texas A&M and I wrote this song about the school called We Bleed Maroon. And it was like a, a, a little bitty hit in that town for those people at the time. And I remember people would just pack into these places. And I remember that moment we played this place called Hurricane Harry's and which is a terrible place, but the name's cool. <laughs> Come on down to Hurricane Her- yeah. Henry's. 800 people came and they That's were all sure. waiting for that one song. And I was so nervous playing the rest of the set because I was thinking, oh, I, don't, I don't want people to leave. I don't want people to go, oh, I'm waiting too long for the song. And then when I played the song, I was worried that they would leave right after that song. Like, I can't, I got what I came for. I'm going to go to the next bar down the road. But... It was an incredible feeling, them singing it back, but terrifying at the same time that I didn't feel justified for people, 800 people buying a ticket to hear one song. Right. And being disappointed. <laughs> Did you play it like three-fourths the way through? It definitely wasn't your opener. <laughs> it definitely wasn't the opener. And, and it's a lot of thought behind that because it's like, you don't want to play it at the very end. Yeah. That would really piss people they off. They know the lyrics better than you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so you have about three-fourths. But that's good. If you tend to forget a lyric, you're like, you're looking at, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, got it. Got yeah. Oh, there you. it is. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that, so that, not to get too technical on you, but is, so is there a lot of thought with your team as far as structuring what the set list looks like? Because I think people just think you just go up there and practice. But when you're performing live shows, not to take, you know, but I, I played some stuff where you, there has to be great segues. And then there's yeah. portions of there where I'm sure we're like, okay, after holler, we're going to do a band introduction and I'm going to mm. go fish is on the guitar. Whoever's on the drum, bada, 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 bada. like, is there a lot of thought in structuring what a set list looks like? And I'd imagine that's somewhat current to what your hit is or yep. the, the town favorite song. Yeah. Every night. It's a, it's a lot of thought. We have you do that every night, every night we have uh, what we call a production meeting right after sound check. We all go back to the bus we all sit down on the couches, you know, we kind of wrangle everybody's brains and get them focused on what we're doing. And it's a built, it, yeah, partly on the hits of the time, but sometimes the hits of that market are different than another market. So right, right. we go to Salt Lake, that we know that they're going to like this song, but when we go to Chicago, it's a, it's a, they don't even know that song. So we, we kind of tailor it to that crowd, those people, and then we have to build those segues and kind of build that roller coaster where, okay, we're going to bring it down here and this is going to be like acoustic. We're going to be on stools and kind of get a moment and then we're going to build it back up and then Earl's going to come out, you know, so we try to just kind of build that roller coaster every night. Earl has his own bus, doesn't he? He just shows up late in his own pickup. Oh, no, in his own pickup. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. Come on, boy, let me drive that thing. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's cr- Do you guys go even like super technical on it where you're looking at like consumer analytics as far as your YouTube comparatively to that city and see what that viewership is? Or is it more of just like intuitively based of what they're going to want in that that city state? It's more intuitive. It's more either, either we've been there before and we know Got those it. people. But even before that, before we were, we knew people, we would follow social media. We just go, oh man, they're, everyone's saying they want the country boy song. So let's make that like the pinnacle of this set tonight. All right, I'm going to ask you some two hard questions. Yeah. First one, what's the absolute worst show you've ever played? Because maybe weather or, you know, you, were hammered. Just, you got <laughs> beers thrown at you because they're like, you ain't no Texas boy. Like what, what's yeah. the worst one? You're like, I guess we're just going to keep singing. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's been a lot. I mean, there's <laughs> there's been a lot, but... Uh, I would say I've, I've been injured several times. And so I'd have to oh, put one of those as the, as the top of those. And 
The worst one was in um, Saraville, New Jersey. And I fell off the stage oh, and hit the, uh, the barricade, metal barricade, Oof. and broke two ribs, separated them completely, and one of them pierced my lung. And so, I, first of all, you're, go you're going through the, the, a little bit of adrenaline and embarrassment of you just fell off yeah. the stage. Well, it looks like we got another viral video on YouTube right, of me falling right. off the stage. So I'd rather fall off the stage than get hit by a dildo. That's debatable. Uh, I don't know about piercing a lung as a singer. That sounds yeah, pretty terrible. True. Who was it that got hit by the dildo? Was that Dave Chappelle? Or that was a banana. Uh, somebody, they threw a dildo at somebody. Probably. It's fair to say that. I mean, that's a good, that's a funny talking point. At least you could finish the show. True. True. You know, intact. As long as you didn't think it was the microphone by accident. True. Did, did you snack. finish the show? So luckily, <laughs> we had had many discussions before that show that the band knew never stop playing. Because that makes it worse. Like, the band stops. That's worse. Yeah, guitar's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The the drums like, like, yeah. yeah, you're right. So my drummer, he knew, I'm not stopping. I am not stopping. Like, Granger, I can't even see him. He's off the front of the stage, <laughs> down. Smoke, haze, everybody's yeah, still I'm just cheering. Keep going. Fuck it. And this was, this was a great show, technically. I mean, there was, a, there was a lot of people. They were having fun. And band never stopped. Never stopped until I got all the way back up the stage. You know, waved at everybody like, I'm good. I wasn't. My tour manager goes, are you good? And I was like, no. But kept singing, finished that song, played another song. Luckily, it was at the end. Finished that last song. Walked off the stage and like, man, I felt something crunching in here. And I was like, something's not right. So he had, he had a ride ready and we went from there straight to the emergency room. That's a good old boy right that there, though. You finished the set with the <laughs> yeah. separated ribs and a punctured lung. Yeah. What, okay, second hard question. Yep. Uh, what's like the biggest mess up, not from you, but a band member where you're like singing and you're like, that's probably that's your last song. show. Have you ever had one of your band members just like, completely screw the pooch on it on set? Yeah, there's been many of those too. I mean, you play enough shows, you have enough of these, these problems. I've, we've had many shows where somebody has started a song in the wrong key. Oh, Ooh. shit. Like that happens. If it goes too high, and it's then you're capos like... capos three, not like, two, you like, idiot. That's, that's the example. You <laughs> you're switch, like, I can't sing that high. <laughs> yeah, so you switch to capo, and it's worse than singing high. It's like half the guys know that it happened. The other half doesn't know it happened. So when they all come in, it's like two different keys, which is just terrible noise. Mm. So that's happened. Then I remember one time in uh, in Vegas. Vegas is a terrible place for um, for for a lot of things, but it's a terrible place for uh, RF on your your ears that you you know okay. the the signal that you're hearing. So a lot of times, most of the time, we we only hear through our ears, right? Which are RF powered. Yeah. In Vegas, we were right by an airport and it's, is shit. It, yeah, it's terrible connectivity. So I remember one time it was a big crowd, big festival. It's actually the same, the same festival, Route 91, where there was the shooting. It was the year before that. And we all lost signal about the same time. So the catwalk is 50 feet long. I'm out on the catwalk. The drummer loses it. The bass player loses it. Pretty soon, we, no one knows where we are in the song or what the, what the click is which you know, it might be mm -hmm. confusing to someone listening, but we rely on the click Beep, bop, bop, no, you're telling back. us what, what the rhythm of the song is. So if yeah. the drummer's playing ahead of everyone, then the guitar player can't hear where the drummer is. It sounds like a high school band that doesn't exactly. know what a metronome is. Exactly. Yeah. Well, also too, if, you, if you've never sat side stage or been on stage during a big concert, you cannot hear anything. <laughs> anything. Yeah. Like, Nothing. Like that's the thing Nothing. is you can't hear shit. Like Nothing. that's why hanging out side stage at a show sucks. Like yeah. you can't hear the vocals. All you really hear is the kick drum. Yeah. Like that's it. <laughs> and people get confused because they're like, well, we go to concerts, it's so loud. How could you not hear? It's all ahead of you. We're behind yeah. the yeah. speakers. <laughs> yeah. So we can't hear what the crowd hears. That's why we rely on our ears. If those go out, which it did in Vegas that time and several other times, but that just happened to be a lot of people. And that's that's one of the shows you're talking about where we walked off and we're like, we quit. We're done. Really? Everyone hates us. We're the worst. We're the worst band ever. Did you guys just keep playing the song and wish for the best? Yeah, we had sound guys running around trying to hardwire the packs, you oh, know, man. like running lines to, so that the drummer could hear. And the drummer, our drummer Dusty, was actually looking at our bass player, call, like mouthing 
one, two, three, four, two, two, three, you know, just like yeah. mouthing it, which barely helps, but it was terrible. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good part about if you don't know about like live shows is especially now there's so much technology involved with that. When you look back at the old school, you kind of had a playback and a speaker that would just, you had your own speaker, right? And you could hear your voice. Yeah. So you could kind of ah, find where you're at. The drummer yeah. had is everything. But now you guys are running around. Yeah, monitors running out don't to the, exist on this shit. Yeah, there like, are it's no- too big. Yeah. Well, yeah, especially those big venues. And it, like you, if you're running out in the catwalk, you're you're in between what the, everybody's hearing and then the band's behind you. So I'm sure the only thing, the guide, what you're seeing in the tempo, the everything is in your ears. Yeah. And that's why you'll see a lot of guys like adjust their earpiece based off of what they're hearing, right? Yeah. And, and the, as a singer, I could always drop my ears out and I could make it. I could even not sing and people are going to be okay with that. But when the band starts getting all flustered yeah, and out of fucking... rhythm, it really gets messed up. And that, that's what happened that night. Did, did you get bad feedback from that? You get a, get a one star on Yelp? <sighs> Man, I, I don't... Is there Yelp for the, bands? More like Granger shit, not Granger. You're like, well, guys, we lost our RF single. The <laughs> reality <laughs> is most people don't care. They're at a show, drinking, they're having fun. They don't care as much as we do. But we're thinking about how much better we could have been for them. Yeah. Right. And then and then what really sucks is we start thinking about what the other bands that are watching us are thinking on the side of the stage. They're headlining. Yeah, but they know, right? they know too. Like, I mean, we I, uh, when we were in Florida, I saw I saw Asking's ears go out and Danny just stopped it. He was like, stop. He told the crowd, hey, we, we lost. Like, we're going to fuck this up worse if we don't fix this real quick. Crowd doesn't care. I They're wish, like, okay. <laughs> sometimes I wish my personality was more like that. Yeah, I've yeah. never done that. He just started doing comedy. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I, I'll tell you I, some jokes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm much more, let's just fake it till we make it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Third hard question. Oh, okay, wait. okay. Heard Turnbike's making a comeback. What do you think? Really? That's really? what I, that's word on the street is that he got sober and he's coming back. Man, I had there. There's some crazy stories with those guys on the road. Yeah, like that's <laughs> that's a band where he'll wake up and like the first beer comes at seven a.m. and yeah. he stayed up till six <laughs> drinking, and uh, and and it got to the point with those guys. I don't know them that well, but I know guys that have worked for them. It got to the point where those guys they just didn't talk. I so they didn't talk. I did. I had never heard of them, and I went to one of their shows when we first moved here uh, at one of the really cool amphitheaters up in New Braunfels or something. Yeah, and obviously the show was good. Their music's good. Yeah, but three quarters of the way through, I'm looking at the people that brought me there. I'm like, that dude is wrecked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think the touring life's for everybody. You don't have to give specific names, obviously. But have you ever like, man, I look up to this. The singer, and then you're like, he or she is just a shit show, like yeah. hammered, doesn't care, screw the crap. I feel like yeah, some people would be that way. At least totally, for- totally, man. Yeah, 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 there's a lot of bands like that. I mean, Turnpike's probably a good example, but like you said, touring's not for everybody, which is crazy to think that you could be a musician and you actually love music and making music and writing music way more than you like performing it. In fact, you can get to the point where you hate performing it, but you become a slave to it. Yeah. Because that's your income. That's your, like I said, that that becomes your sole dancing monkey. point of, and yeah, you're the dancing chicken on the stage and you're doing it just to pay the bills and you mm-hmm. actually hate it. And you could see that when you're at a live show and you see a band, you could see, oh, they hate this. They hate this. Ask Jared. I hate performing live. Yeah, he does not like I live. I hate it. It's, I mean, we he's did. always trying to twist my neck to two, perform. We did two days when we did a live comedy thing, one one night in Denver and one night in Colorado Springs. And I actually kind of, all of us were like, yeah, this life stuff sucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> this life, the life yeah, of it. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It doesn't suck, but it, I, it, it, it was it, hard. It's hard. Yeah. It, it is. And, and I think two, two performances. Yeah. You have to have an affinity for it for sure. Because that same thing, you know, and we stayed out and did a meet and greet after, and then you're waking up, you know, at like 10, 11, you're like hung over because you stayed out late with everybody. And then you're doing sound check it. Prepping and getting two, ready to go, And your yeah. voice is smoked and they're like yep. trying to get ready to play guitar and your fingers are swollen from the whistle. I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't be good at this. Yeah. I need a day off. <laughs> That's not rare that you say that. And you you have to love it. You have to like intrinsically love to perform, love to play live. If you don't, it's going to catch up with you at some point. Absolutely. How have you maintained your angelic voice for this <laughs> long? Is it 
Because, well, luckily, country, I'd imagine, is a little easier on the vocal cords. Cinnamon but and lemon. Cinnamon and lemon. You can ginger tell tea. he takes a lot. Look at his skin. He's got great skin. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a lot yeah. of cinnamon in his diet. Good looking guy. I see cinnamon. 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 I'm cinnamon. jealous of that shape, you know? <laughs> Maybe I should try I'm that. shaped like a pear. Cinnamon, lemon. Uh, like vocal coaches or. I, 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 you know what? Um, first of all, I, I, I'm not going to say I have any kind of angelic voice, but. Uh, I've I've just learned over so many shows, thousands of shows, that um, I know when probably my limit is like how many shows I could do in a row, and right now it's probably like um, seven. Seven okay. shows is about the max. Wow. When I've got to take a vocal break for at least one day, mm-hmm. and and we had to learn that the hard way. We had to learn where it's like, oh, this is so fun. Let's book like twelve in a row because right. this is going great, and then you realize. We probably shouldn't have done that ninth show. We were terrible. I think the hard part with that too, because you've seen some people like, God, this band's terrible live. And you're like, they're actually pretty good. The singer just probably blew a vocal cord and he's yeah. like rasping yeah. like, they're 13, 13 days into this. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oof, man, yeah. that Ooh. does not sound good. And I have, I've, I've uh, blown a vocal cord. Cool. I, you name it, I've probably done it. Yeah. That's Long me. vocal cord. Yep, yep. Man, thank you for your country music service, dude. <laughs> yeah. This is getting hard. Yeah. I'll write a book up. Thank you. Thank you for my service. Yeah. Oh, fourth hard question. Uh-oh. The Cash Me Outside girl has started a music career. Any thoughts on a feature? Hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm down for that. It's 2020. Might, might as well, right? <laughs> Baby, my friend. Cash Me Outside. <laughs> 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 I'm down for that. Do you, do you ever do features? Because, uh, I mean, or or is you just kind of practice on solo? Because I don't know if country music's different, but like rappers and all of that, that's part of like the marketing persona is getting features, getting, yeah. you know. I see a female feature is more prominent in a country style, doing a duet, you know, type thing. That's true. You don't see a lot of male on no, male. No, there's no male on male. Yeah. What's, what's crazy I mean, is... um channel. <laughs> the, the, definitely country market, as you know, probably has gotten a lot more into features. But the funny thing is, we're sitting here today, literally because of features. Because True. for Holler, mm-hmm. that originally was like, I, I texted Jason Aldean and Luke Combs and all, a lot of uh, Florida Georgia Line, who we talked about earlier. A lot of these guys, I was like, hey, do you want to come? We'll just, we'll just have this crazy party and, and just sing. And all of them, every one of them, 100% said no. Oh. So I was like, okay, new direction. So Let's I was like, call all right. these crazy Texas boys and dude, that will show up in their rap. You know it changed my life. It <laughs> changed my life because of that. Really. I, I gotta, I, and that's where I don't understand the music world because I've thought of that often. Like how viral still to this day is Garth Brooks showing up at a Justin Timberlake show randomly. Yeah. That's, that video has been viewed a God knows how many billion times. Yeah. Like the audience went nuts. They thought it was the coolest thing ever. Why don't entertainers do more of this shit? That's the name. It's funny. That's the name of the band in country crossover. (laughs) I would say one more shoe. I would say laziness. (laughs) I, I really think that's the best. There's a lot of red tape in politics. It's like, do I want to be in holler? I don't know. There's gun, there's a couple guns in there and I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good look for my image. So there's a lot of that. And right. then I think there's a lot of just like, eh, I'm good. That sounds like I got to get on an airplane. Again. It's just so, they don't, they never take in the aspect of how excited that would make. Well, I don't even base. think you right. had to, like, right, it's, right. it's not discrediting the artist in yeah. my opinion, because that, no. that, a lot of that happens from the label and bless their hearts, but they're using kind of a more antiquated methodology associated with how to market a band or a musician. And and I've seen that working I don't with- bless any label's heart. They can all fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> all of you. Everyone that works for a label. It can, it can be challenging, right? Because you have this marketing staff <laughs> that has this brand persona of what you should represent and then that mild like, ooh, we're country, but we don't do guns. You know, and, and I can see- their thought process in it, even though I massively disagree with it because- I don't understand their base at that point. We're country, but we don't do guns. We don't know who listens to our music. Right, it's just, it's it's the same thing that's happened with our brand, you know, early on and and still to this day is so people are very risk averse. They're they're, they're terrified of what they don't know. And they might see, you know, an ATV getting flipped like when Robert Orbers flipped that uh, ATV and be like, oh my God, this is dangerous. We can't be a part of it. It's like, 
no, we're about being country guys. We signed waivers and we're like, Robert, don't take that sharp turn because you're going to flip it, you 350 yeah. pound gorilla. Like you are, I don't want to make him mad because he'll just, he'll, he'll crush me like a soda can. Yeah, I he's love got Robert. a little dog though. Yeah, he's got a little dog. It's he's got cute. a little dog. But he like plays in and stood up immediately and everybody's laughing and had a great time. And I think a lot of people are very risk averse when it comes to that style of content. Yeah, sure. And if, what's crazy is that we, everyone loves to say, they, they like kind of demonize a record label. You know, we, we've all been there. Everyone listening probably thinks that. But the, the funny thing is, they're all normal people. They're all, you know, most, everyone on my, on my label, they're good people. But if, we, so everyone in this room, if we decided we're going to make a Black Rifle record label and we're going to change the world. But what happens is 10 years go by and we, we have people that we're work for time. us and, and, and everyone's thinking about the next big thing. And then we all start making decisions based on fear. That's just, it's always been that way. You start making decisions based on, have I don't you know. Have commercials? That's a good, Let's not put a Black Rifle maybe label not, that way. Maybe yeah. not. Maybe like, Send it. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if, if Black Rifle did right. and they were successful, they would be the first right. record label to ever not be driven by fear. So it is kind of normal that that just happens. Yeah, I think more people are, 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 are fear-oriented as things scale because a mess up drastically impacts like the, you know, top of the line revenue and it's easier to be safe and just kind of can, like live in the space that you do. Yeah. And so you could flip it and you could say if Black Rifle made a label and then 10 years down the road, there's some guy who's anti-guns, but he has right. a huge following and right. he's got a great voice and he's got, he could bring a lot more people to the table, but we would all sit down and go, I don't know, he's anti-gun. At that way we might lose our fan base and we would all have to think about it. I'd fly him out to the range, let him shoot and see that it's a tool and not this demonized weapon that he's been socially constructed to believe in. And then we'd mind. flip him and then he'd be our top yeah. performer. Then it would be successful. <laughs> yeah. There you go. In a perfect world. <laughs> done. That's done. done. Fifth hard question. Oh, yeah. man. Wow, we're still going? How many, how much percent off is Lord Hot Dog get you at the Yee Yee store? The code. Are you going to be a brand ambassador for Yee Yee? I just heard there's a know Lord Hot Dog fit, code. I don't know if you fit the brand what do you mean persona. Fit? What do you, doesn't have XL? No, I don't know if you fit oh. <laughs> the brand persona. We, I've, had a, I've had a black rifle code before. Matt gave it to me. So we'll just do whatever he did. We'll do the same code. Same discount code. We're going to send people over to Yee Yee. Perfect. You got, had you, what's the plan for that brand going forward? Just kind of keeping up with your doing? Like, are you guys planning on doing any new product releases? Are you sticking with apparel merchandise? You know? Yeah, I was talking to uh, Lunkers TV mm -hmm. and he was like, dude, you got to sell it. Like, that's the goal. Sell it. Sell Yee Yee. Get out. Get out. And I was like, but then what would I do? Yeah. And I'd be so <laughs> bored. Right. And, and he's like, well, then no one's told you the right price yet. I'm like, ah, I don't know. So it's, a, it's an interesting question. But yeah, we want to just keep growing it. The, the, the immediate goal, here I am talking about goals, but if you're setting your highest intention, then, the, then that goal is separate it and have it live completely on its own without music. Yeah. yeah. And so I asked my youngest brother, Parker, a lot. I'm like, could it live without music? And he's always like immediately like, yes. But then me and Tyler get together and we're like, no, nah, we probably need another song. <laughs> so I don't know. Well, I agree. I think that, that that's similar probably to our brand. The whole goal early on was not to be reliant on certain individuals and or specific content to that person and the brand stands alone. But I think you do li lose certain aspects of that brand because I think of Yee Yee, I think of you. So, right. Like, like I think of Granger Smith. I think of you rocking Yee Yee. I think of Earl Dubs. I think of all the fun stuff on your channel. That's what I think of. And but so then the branding's fucking cool and it's standalone. And I think that's a great kind of correlation between two brands, you as an individual and then yeah, the but brand. It's putting you at a brand position now as you grow to say, okay, how do I spread this out? How do I spread this weight out? Right. So the things? goal is would be able to separate from, from me over the years where eventually my son could be CEO of Yee Yee. Yeah. I'm long gone and and the company is still growing in its own right. That would be the goal. You're not long gone. You're a cute grandpa that sings campfire <laughs> still songs. Still singing. Okay. Still and we'll singing. be in a country boy band at 80, you know, yeah. singing I'll take together. It. Yeah. Two horseshoes. Campfires. That one. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> That's good. You got you got uh, releasing. So you uh, you just launched an album, right? When, what month did that come out? Yeah, so September, the end of September, we put out the first of two volumes. Which was, it was... Um, Country Things. Country Things. Volume, volume one. one. Country Things, volume two comes out Black Friday. Oh, wow. And, and so 
uh, eight songs on one, eight songs on the other. Okay. I felt like 16 was a lot for these days for someone to consume all of the songs and still get some of the deeper album cut songs that you want them. You don't want them just glaze over because they're going after the 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 flashier songs, the Earl Dibble songs or whatever. Right. Um, so split it up, a couple months in between. It's the first time I've ever done anything like this. So the, the whole project will be out at the end of November with the actual physical copy. Do you, do you have a lot of creative control over what each song is going to be? Because I know historically I've heard bands speak to, you know, they have six just absolute bangers of a song and albums sometimes will be like, we're going to put three on this one mm-hmm. to make sure we save those epic ones for later. Or you kind of have that creative ability to be like, no, this is what this album looks like. Or, or is it more of a team cohesion with the label as well? Yeah, I mean, I mean, great question and totally valid to probably a lot of people. For us, I'm very lucky that my brother is my manager. We have 100% control over our albums epic. and every song. And the way we look at it is, if we have six great songs, we're going to put them out right now on Sweet. this album because there might not be another album. Yeah. Or we might have written, hopefully we've written better songs well, after that anyway. And that's happened. I, I've, had, I've had songs where I've said, I've got something kind of like this and this one's great, but I'm going to save it. And it never makes the next album. Never, Zero yeah. percent of the time does that song make the next album because you've already outwritten it or you feel like style, you're a little bit different style now or, but we're very lucky that we have a hundred percent control over what we put out. You guys are burning it down then. If you launched volume one in September and then late November, mid late November, you're launching another one. That's historically in my understanding, a very quick turnaround because a lot of bands will do one a year, maybe one every two years. Was that just like you guys are writing right now because the touring's a little chilling? Pretty much. Yeah, I had 16 songs. Probably because of touring was so slow, I had a lot to write about or, or more time, I should say, to write them. And what really sucks, and this is, the, this is a, the number one thing right now in country music that sucks, is that we rely still on country radio right. to oh. dictate when we're going to put out new music. Meaning... You put out one single nowadays in today's climate, one single will last 50 weeks on radio. And you, so it's you're like, the year people, if you don't have any weeks in a year, promoting the same song all, all year. year. And you think, man, people got to be sick of this by now, but people are just now discovering it eight months down the road. Right. It's so slow. It's terrible. I mean, in the old days, George Strait would put out three singles every year. And then at the end of the next year, there's a new album with three new singles. And he would burn through and burn through them. So now we, we rely on, well, should we put out this new album? Because we're only on single number two. <laughs> and we're going to have to tr- just dump all of these songs from this previous album because we're already ready for a new album and the fans are ready. So it creates a huge problem. Yeah, I guess I didn't think about that separation because like I don't listen to radio. Like I I've went through your whole recent album and I'd be absolutely like every month drop a new album. There's my Spotify playlist. Let's go. But I think from a radio perspective, yeah, you're only getting what that single play every four to six hours or something on if you're listening to Sirius XM yep. or, or yeah. So you're you're really uh, that, it's not a lot of exposure. That. Yeah. You get to when you first put out a single, Sirius, for example, will play it at 2 a.m. one time, three times a week. So then, then they bump it up and, oh, this is getting a little traction. So in two months from now, now they're playing it at 3.30 p.m. and 2 a.m. Made it. Four times a week. <laughs> and, and Spotify is not that different. So Spotify is all about the playlisting. Right. So like right now we have a song on Hot Country. But, and then they're monitoring that song with all their analytics and all their data. They're just super nerdy about it. Which is actually probably a good thing because they're, they're reading how many people, how long is someone listening to Granger's song? How many seconds? Are yeah. they getting to the chorus? Are they getting to the second chorus? That'd be really good if they're making it all the way. And so yeah, yeah, you, you okay. think about, should I put out a new song when Spotify is saying that this one's just getting traction, the one that's on Hot Country now? So it's a lot right, of facts. Because it resets the analytics. Data science going into it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I guess I didn't think about that, how Spotify and XM would do the same thing as like YouTube watch time. and Exactly. Engaging yeah. the algorithm. Exactly. Like, yeah. Interesting. 
Did, uh, is this last, and this is not a hard question, but during quarantine, my song, you made a, Tim Montana and I song, you made a lovely cameo. Yep. Was that, was that whiskey, real whiskey in, in that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you said that it was like two p.m. I'm like, man, he he went for it. He 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 played the part. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, I think I gave you the chorus too because it was like, hell yeah, Granger's singing our chorus. This is awesome. I thought about that. I saw that video and I was like, yeah, he gave me the chorus. Yeah, he gave me. <laughs> and, there, chorus. and there was some he like, gave me the chorus. Yeah, there was some other big guys in there, and I was like, Granger's a homie. He's gonna get the chorus. <laughs> That's a- it's a good, good prime time spot. And I had to use Michael Ray a couple times, of course, yeah. just because he's a handsome, he's a, handsome he's, devil. And he's a good dude. Yeah, Michael Ray's awesome, man. He's going to be in our... Uh, I just our, our spent some uh, time with him in Nashville. Nashville. Was the last time I was drinking was with him. Oh, yeah. He's one of my favorites. He's right. a good dude. Love good him. dude. Well, heck, man, where, where can people find Yee Yee? Where can people find Granger Smith? Where can they find Earl Dubs? Yeah, yeah. Yee Yee.com uh, is all things Yee Yee. Grangersmith.com is all things me. And somewhere along the line, they both those things tie together. Right. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, we love you and you're a kick-ass dude. And Thank you, out, dude. man. We'll, yeah. we'll do some more fun stuff in the we, future, brother. We finally did it. Yes. We finally did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it this week. We said this week. We, we weren't sure when, we but did. it happened. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for listening for Range American and Grangersmith.